This is the Swarm and Shoot football show with me, Manny Matsakis, as we kick off season two. We've been fortunate because we've had a, a few good interviews. We bring Lynn Grohl on here, and um, he's able to interview some of our players. And we've got a lot coming up in this upcoming season. And um, this Swarm and Shoot football show is brought to you by Big B Coffee, which I've got right here. And uh, it's right across campus here on North Clinton Street. Get the finest coffee beverages in Defiance, as well as great pastries and breakfast sandwiches to start off your day. And for most of us, we also get a pick-me-up in the afternoon by heading across the street to see Sue and everybody over at Big Coffee. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, BSN Sports. Rob Held, Jim Garris, and the crew over here the sales team are the professionals that you definitely need to get in touch with to get your gear. All the DC gear, if you're a high school program out there listening to this, get in touch with these guys and they will help you out. They do a fantastic job with high schools, colleges, businesses in the, in the area. Um, can get whatever type of apparel they need customized just for their business. So I know uh, Rob does a great job for us. Jim is our rep that I see virtually every week of the year, and it just, it's just outstanding customer service. Hi, welcome to episode 69 of the Swarm and Shoot Football Show. I'm here with uh, our man, Lynn Grohl, uh, with Black Swamp Football Magazine, and uh, he is uh, going to do an interview with us here. And uh, go, it's all on you. Yeah, we're going to wrap up what's been going on since uh, the last time we talked, probably what was that, early November or so, Coach? Mm-hmm. Uh, what What has uh, kind of been going on with the program and, and those sorts of things? I know you went through some some fall practices and got out got some good practices in there. Yeah, I'd say uh, fall for us was fantastic. I mean, it was an opportunity um, to develop a group of, uh, of youngsters that uh, just entered into college, a lot of freshmen, and uh, able to install the whole offense, the whole defense in ways that uh, we have never been able to do. Because, um, you know, typically you have an August training camp and then, you know, two and a half weeks, then you're getting ready for game one. Uh, We were able, I believe, by the time we were done and we wrapped up the, the Saturday prior to Thanksgiving, uh, we were able to get uh, about 25, 26 practices in, uh, most of them fully padded. We scrimmaged quite a bit. Uh, we were able to get a lot of guys' reps at different times, and we, we probably practiced five, six days a week in, in, in a different capacity to try to accelerate the process because you don't really get any better at f- being a football player other than playing the game of football. You can lift all you want, you can run all you want, but you have to play the game. And there's a lot of intricacies we have never been able to um, get into our players the way that I would like to. And um, so it was awesome. It felt like I was back at a Division I school, Division II uh, in spring ball, but actually in a way even better, you know. For us. And especially with a lot of freshmen coming in. And, and how many yeah. freshmen did you bring in uh, last fall? We brought in um, 94 is what the final number was when it all came through, which, which was uh, great for us uh, to, to um, not just weed some out, but also to develop some. It's almost a blessing level. to have that with, with a squad of that many young kids. Yeah. I mean, was, we, we were sitting between that and a total around 130 or so players. Um, and then once we got through the initial, you know, just the first couple months, you know, September, October, where that was the t- roughest part because we weren't able to do much with these guys uh, because of social distancing and, and so forth. All meetings were um, video conference, video conferencing meetings and so forth. So it, it, that was tough. But then we just fi- I felt we finished with a bang. Mm hmm. Yeah, so. a veteran team maybe a uh, fall practice like we just had in in twenty twenty uh, maybe is boring. Um, I don't know. It's stuff that they've been through. Maybe doesn't yeah. help them as much. Take me through that from a coaching thought yeah. process. Uh, for me, I, I thought it was a blessing. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, it was a great opportunity we to teach to um, get to know these guys a lot better. But I'll, I'll be honest, September and October we barely knew these guys, and and that caused. 
in my mind, some significant problems because some of these guys, we, we, li- we literally, because we couldn't be around them much, we lost them. You know, there, there was a handful of guys that I think could have been good players, but because of the um, lack of opportunity to be with them uh, like you would like, uh, it, that affected it. But because we finished so strong, I felt that, oh, okay, great. We're, we're going to be okay going into the next year. How did they grasp um, the, the fall practices and the, and the things you did, the, the young guys in, well, in particular? You know, the, the way we did them, I thought, was very beneficial. We had a lot of, uh, you know, we broke the practice up almost uh, what you would think uh, NFL-style practices. It was a lot of initially like OTA in the beginning of practice, individual, a lot of fundamental drills, more time, because you didn't have to get ready for a game at the end of the week anymore. You know, so we were able to develop them, and then we transitioned, and we were able to do a lot of good on good. So we might have had, you know, two offensive units, two defensive units, sometimes three good threes on each side. And then we would have one seven-on-seven going on on one side of the field, another one on the other side, and it's fully stocked. And and literally, if you've got maybe 30 plays in, you actually got 60 because both sides were working hard that way so it's like there's nothing like reps and uh i thought having that uh and the way that it went forward i thought was outstanding you know mm-hmm. contact and, and getting uh to be able to hit was yeah, that as kind big. of derailed a little bit with with the covid pandemic going on and some some it, guidelines that you had to go through or well it, it, in the initial parts we had to adjust practice with protocol to eventually get to those 25 or so contact type prac for a month worth. And I thought that was good because at the beginning was just, we broke them up. You know, we, we, we created a practice format where guys were distanced and so forth and it worked just fine. We didn't have any COVID outbreaks once we, once we got through that into uh, November. So, so things got cleaned up a lot and uh, you know, and then, and in, in retrospect, you know, this is the first time our country and football has ever had to deal with this. You, you, you look at, you know, here's a team like Ohio State playing in the national championship game. I know you're not a Buckeye fan. But, you know, the, the interesting thing about this is, you know, they had massive outbreaks over in Colorado. Well, they're still talking about maybe moving it back another week because yeah, of what's going right? on. They have some more issues down okay. there. Okay. And it's all over the country. It's in the NFL. But somehow the SEC found a way to play a bunch of games. Somehow this stuff happened and people realize that, you know, this is still in many ways – it is. It's the heart of America. It's a great football. Football is a great game, and if we are smart, and in our in our way, you know, we had an outbreak earlier in the in in the fall, you know. But you know, I, it's no more than Ohio State's had. Yeah, it got it know. under control quickly. Yeah, even yeah, we got it under control. It was rough and all that kind of stuff. But but it was uncharted territory, you know. And I felt that that uh, was something that we grew through together as a team we understood hey there's certain things you got to do you got to mask up you got to wash your hands you got to make sure you're doing certain things to protect each other and once we got to that it was great i honestly think i I, you know i can't you know turn back the clock but had i and after having this experience had i to do it again we i would have really pushed hard like a lot of other schools did to have training camp in August a week or two before school starts. So I could be around these guys, get a process in, and we probably would have never had an outbreak. I mean, a very good chance that we may not have had something because we would have had rapport and be able to work and teach these young men how to be. But literally we just never had that opportunity. And then it just went rampant and you know, it's, it's scary. It just, it started to spread. And then, you know, nobody really knows how, you know, but, you know, nobody does. So, you know, I, I think we were fortunate that November finished strong for us. And I, I think that's the benefit of this deal. How did the kids handle um, the guidelines and the protocols that you had to, to, to put in place? Uh, did it probably improved as, as the practices went on? It certainly improved. And, uh, and I think at, at one point, I, you know, when we hit November, we we're, I think, a model of how to do things correctly. 
Um, but once again, if I'd I had a training camp, if we'd have, if I'd have thought that that was you know, and that's on me, I didn't push for that. But you know, had I thought about what that could have helped to to do that, because it's funny, football players come to college to get an education, but they come because they're recruited by a particular coach and a program. I get it, all right? But what happens is when you come and you're not allowed around, you're literally not around these guys, it's different when a, when your coaches and your head coach is there saying, hey, this is how we're going to be. I can say it in a Zoom meeting, you know. I can, you know, the, it, it can be an edict in um, student life. It can be whatever it is, but there's nothing like you're all together, the personal touch, to explain what's going on, especially when you think about 17, 18-year-old kids. That, that's, that's the thing that, uh, in retrospect, we probably needed more education because um, you know, a lot of the education at, at many schools is, uh, hey, uh, get, get, take this online course on COVID. Oh, okay, great. And, and, and they have, it's great material, but you're 17, 18-year-olds. And they're sitting there, and I, a lot of them are on their phones, they're list watching a video. They're they're not paying attention, right? But if you got them, and they're and and you've captured their attention in a football meeting, even positional meetings, those kind of things, um, it, it makes a big difference. And, and there's no doubt because it all shifted when we were able to do that toward the middle of the semester. Had you not had this fall practice. Um, what would have that been like for these kids not having football this past fall coach in your, mm. your mind? The, the 94 pre- freshman would have probably been about 50. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't have even come. Right. There, there was a lot of that. I mean, it was like we were recruiting to the end to get these kids here. They wanted to be here, but without, pre- without some way knowing that they would be able to improve as football players. And all we were able to do was practice. We couldn't even get in the weight room because there's too many bodies and you can only put, you know, 20 people in a weight room, you know, a couple people to a rack. That's all you could do. So just because the sheer numbers where other programs have the opportunity to get in there, I mean, they just don't have as many numbers so they can get in. They were lifting. And all that. Yeah. Let's think about this. Weightlifting was invented for the sport of football, mm-hmm. not any other sport. That's right. You know, nothing. There's not, you can't tell me a basketball team started lifting before a football team. It was in Paul Brown, Maslin, Ohio. That's what happened. It's like, let's wake up. You know, it's like these kids, that is what is their lifeblood. And we, we were fortunate to get a practice, mm-hmm. you know, to get the practice. In, but we still weren't able to get anywhere near what we could have done it, because the weightlifting aspect was virtually non-existent we had very few opportunities to train those kids so we were doing outdoor uh type of functional training work and you know whatever we could do uh to 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 just uh develop their bodies but nowhere near you know you're sitting there doing power cleans and you know uh, all type snatches deadlifts squats all the the things that make you a good football player we we lost that opportunity and and that is the only thing that it's like, dang, what have other what did other people do that they saw? And I started noticing, well, you know, there's some other colleges that made outdoor weight rooms, hmm. you know. So it was outdoor. They put them in. They they took a, some other colleges in Ohio. I saw they were looking. It's like you know they put all the weights out into the like our George Smart Center. You know they put them out there. You know that was you know, the, kudos to them. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, you know, which is great. You know, I'm, I'm all, I mean, it is what it is, but I'm grateful for what the opportunity we did end up finishing with. But uh, I know we'd be a heck of a lot better team um, right now if, if we were able to take those three months and also develop them, uh, you know, strength, conditioning, and so forth. Last thing for you, was it frustrating seeing high school teams playing on Friday nights and <laughs> you guys are in Division One teams playing on Saturdays and you're sitting here? With, with no games? Frustrating, yes. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, hey, you know, three-fourths of this team are freshmen. Mm-hmm. Where would they have been if, had we had to play the opener? 
you know, we had capital would have been our opening game, you know, and uh, where would we have been? And we would have once again been the youngest team with the least amount of practices to, to handle to, to put in for our starters. It would have been, I think, would have been, we were definitely would have been better than a year before, but not much. I mean, the results might we might have closed the gap here and there because we have better, yeah, I think, better athletes now. But uh, so in the back of my mind, I'm thinking like, ah, hey, you know what? I'm actually grateful for this. You know, what an opportunity. And I was able to where I rarely got the opportunity to watch NFL games, to study the NFL films, because I've got a contact that, hey, if I like what the Arizona Cardinals are doing in the red zone, hey, I can get the first 10 games of the season every time they hit the red zone and I can watch it. You know, I can study teams like Coastal Carolina, Georgia Southern or University of Kentucky. Any, I want to look at Alabama. I, I have access to getting all 22 film, which is like the best film you can get of every game in the country. You know, so I literally, I'd, I'd call, I say, hey, give me this film. I want to take a look at it. So it was an opportunity to grow, mature, um, and do some things uh, from that perspective. So I think, um, you know, that's the beauty of it. And I, I don't think we've, we've taken a back seat in recruiting because we focused on that too. Mm -hmm. Staying with that, is it a copycat? They say the NFL is a copycat league. Do you copy some things from UC, from – other colleges, pro? Uh, yes and no. Uh, what I'm looking for more than anything else is the details of how they may be executing a particular play. You know, uh, I'm watching fundamental techniques and skills. I'm looking at how quarterbacks handle themselves when they drop it and they're in the pocket. I'm watching, you know, I'm watching the kid at BYU. I'm seeing, you know, Zach Wilson, and I'm like, oh, he reminds me of Joe Montana. I mean, he really does. Mm -hmm. I mean, no matter what, you know, if you, I don't know if you've seen him much, but yeah, he, yeah. He, he is a dude. You could see that, yeah. Yeah, I, and I think he'll be successful in the National Football League. And then I, I'm watching other guys learning from them through their experiences dealing with adversity and so forth. And it's just like I, you know, I keep a notepad and you know, I got my little voice recorder and I, I think I, I've never journaled so much. Mm -hmm. So it's like you take all that stuff and then at the end of every week when I do my weekly planning for the next week, I, I come in and say, all right, well, what did I really learn this week? You know, okay, well, how does that apply to our staff and our players and our program? And, you know, and then you get some, a few gems. I mean, you, you've got to look, you know, you find the needles in a haystack somewhere that, that truly make a difference in your program. So I'm excited about some of those things I was able to uncover. And, um, you know, sometimes you don't realize because it's just right there in front of you. But when you're in study mode and you're really digging in to try to find something to help your, uh, your, your young men on your team, uh, you're even more inspired, and that 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 was my my fall and winter thus far. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, coach. Yeah, we'll be Appreciate back you. next week to talk yeah. about the upcoming season because it's next year. Thanks so much. I want to thank you for joining us on the Swarm and Shoot Football Show. If you're listening to this podcast, make sure to subscribe in iTunes. Give us a rating, comment on the show. If you'd like to get all kinds of updates, go to our website at swarmandshoot.com, where you will be up to date on all of our podcasts with audio and YouTube versions on there as well. Right? See feature articles on our current players and alumni, along with updates of what's going on in the program. Take a minute and subscribe with your email to receive these regular alerts every time we update the website.